The fourth year of a study to determine how chronic wasting disease impacts mule deer populations in areas of high disease prevalence continues near Douglas. Wildlife managers are looking to see whether the disease regulates mule deer populations and if long-term sustainability of those herds is possible. The University of Wyoming and Wyoming State Veterinary Laboratory, with funding from the U.S. Geological Survey's National Wildlife Disease Center, has been recapturing surviving mule deer via helicopter in the South Converse Mule Deer Herd, where the prevalence of CWD is the highest in the state. Wyoming Game and Fish Department Casper Wildlife Management Coordinator Justin Binfit helped initiate the study. We're trying to understand how CWD influences the regulation of this population. We have the, the highest known prevalence of CWD in any, in any deer herd we know. So we're trying to understand is, is what's this doing to the survival rates of adults and juveniles. What's it doing to our fawn production, our fawn survival? Are these deer that, that are infected, are, they, are their fawns less likely to survive? Are they having less fawns to begin with? Those kind of things. The study is headed up by University of Wyoming graduate student Malia DeVivo with the guidance of Dr. Todd Cornish of the State Veterinary Laboratory. Biopsies of the deer's tonsils are to be tested for chronic wasting disease. Blood samples determine pregnancy rates between does with the disease and without and provides genetic data to study whether some CWD deer live longer with the disease than others. GPS radio collars show migration patterns and seasonal habitat selection. Fawn productivity is typically lower in this herd compared to adjacent herds with similar habitat and other environmental variables. One theory is that chronic wasting disease positive animals produce fewer offspring and raise fewer fawns to adulthood than deer without the disease. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department has been heavily involved in study design, study site selection, and securing access through landowner contacts, as well as providing help in locating does and fawns during the summer and retrieving carcasses when deer die. Now, through the study, wildlife managers can better understand the additional impacts of chronic wasting disease and its potential long-term impacts on free-ranging mule deer populations. This is Ray Hageman with the Wyoming Game and Fish Department.